Hello boys and girls, uh, long time no see. I will start the video right away um, with a sort of scenario that um, puts us into the right gambling mood. I will explain a sort of game, a story that should motivate your interest in what we are going to discuss in this video. We are going to discuss uh, uh, finite Markov chains of, you know, a very general sort, uh, general graph. Uh, uh, you can see them as walks on a general uh, finite graph and we are going to do some small proofs and we are going to look at some Python code and I will show you some convincing simulations so it's going to be fun. Uh, I have not made a video in five months. I, I mean I, I would have a lot of content but um, to, to, to cry a little bit um, there's there's little motivation right you, you know you make a video and then there's like three people replying and uh, it's nice uh, though to have these conversations, but usually it's not that worth the effort because I'm you know, going to sit here for one and a half hours and I sort of uh, have to justify this in front of myself. But uh, this is a nice topic. I have been doing um, a fair bit relating to this sort of Markov chain scenarios. Uh, mostly uh, I've been looking at it from a proof theoretical perspective more than from a probability theory perspective. Um, but okay, this is just a rambling. I will now uh, start this scenario that uh, should motivate what we're going to see and the theorems we're going to see. Okay, so I have here, uh, I typed into Google 20 sided die. You know, I don't know if dice is always the plural of die, but I'm going to say die just because I don't know better. Um, this is like, it gives you this, uh, I don't know, JavaScript thing where you can click and then it rolls a die out of. 20 in this case, um, I'm choosing 20 and I click roll and I get a number. Um, and uh, so I describe a scenario where you and I, we come together and we play for money. And how this works is, you know, we, we grab into our buckets and see how much uh, coins we have. Let's say you happen to have 12 coins, I happen to have 18 coins and together we have 30 coins and we're going to play a game and the game works like this um you know in the simplest uh, in the simplest scenario where we're going to modify it in a second but in the simplest scenario we could do it like this um uh, the die roll is rolled it doesn't really matter who rolls it um and let's say you roll the die and you roll the die and whenever you get um something bigger than 10 right there there are 20 faces there you roll if if you get something bigger than 10 then you win and if not then you lose for example if you would roll a 2 you would lose you roll again get a 6 you lose 6 you lose 9 uh, 17 you win and so on and so forth so you uh, you roll the die if it's more than 10 then you win this sub round and then what happens then whenever you win a roll you get one of the coins that i have so for example you start and you know we can simulate the game for a few rolls you roll you get 17 um i give you one of my coins so you are now at 12 at 13 and i'm down from 18 to 17 we roll again um one you lose so you give me the coin back we're back at uh, 12 18 Roll again, uh, 10 is not uh, more than 10, so you lose again, you're down at 11, and you're down at 10, and you're up at 11 again. And so you see you have this sort of random walk, right, with a 50-50 chance. Okay, so this is the game that we are going to play. But then you say, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> if, uh, you know, if I start with 18 and you have just 12, it's not really a fair game, right, because um, the the chances that I uh, win the overall game are a little bit higher because I'm already closer to that. You can see this if you look at the extremes, right? If you would start the game with me having 29 coins and you just won, then my chance of winning are o already over 50%, clearly, right? Because if you lose the first flip, then I win the whole game. And otherwise, uh, you know, we can go up and down in this random walk a little bit, but there's chances to come back to me. so. It's not really a fair game um, if the starting positions are different. And so the question arises, and this is the sort of question that can be answered. If we both agree we want a fair game and we don't, we say, you know, instead of rolling and saying uh, more than 11 or more, 
uh, we say maybe, I don't know, um, maybe uh, we consider you winning if it's eight or more, right? So we, we, we tweak the chance from 50-50, uh, given a roll, to in this case, uh, seven to 13 of, of the dice roll, right? So we can tweak the, the, the interpretation of whatever comes out of the dice roll to ch change the, um, the movement of the money. And clearly, if we um, change the rules in this way, we can find uh, a strategy which is a little bit more fair, right? Since these are small numbers like 20 and 30 and so on and so forth, the analytical formulas might not get to 50-50 directly. You know, we're not, not dealing here with rational or so real numbers. We have like a few parameters only. We have this sort of uh, the finiteness of this Markov chain is determined by the graph. The graph is just this line going from, you know, zero to 20 coins. And um, the probabilities in this case are uh, some, some rational numbers because we just use a dice. Um, but we can tweak it and have a, a nicer game, right? And the question is, how um, do you compute um, what is what is fair? And one way to answering this is answering the bigger question. Um, given a probability um, setup right, with this dice, you know, n out of 20, like let's say um, 8 uh, just described, given the, the, the p of the dice roll uh, that determines um, if we go up or down with the coin, or at, when, at which value, and given the length of the Markov chain, in this case we said 30 coins, the question is, what is the chance of you winning uh, depending on where you start with, with your coins, right? So what is the, what is the chance that, um, given the setup that you described, uh, that you end up in the winning state? And the winning state and the losing state, the other extreme, these uh, we will call uh, absorbing states of the Markov chain. The Markov chain is, in this case, um, as a state system of just this this line. You know, you just walk up and down the line of these um, 20 or 21 states. And this is already the setup, right? I have made a picture here, right here the above picture, uh, which just descri describes this. So in this case, um, I've chosen the numbers, right? A thousand hours in paint for this beautiful picture. Uh, I think there's 11 st states losing um, position. Uh, you know, you have no money anymore. Winning position, you get all the 11 coins, and you start here. And then uh, uh, for every uh, roll, uh, in this case, uh, the example is I say you move up um, if you have. Uh, this is actually pr pretty bad. <laughs> um, anything up uh, like up to to nine, you know, in this case, there's only like a smaller than fifty percent chance that you move up. Clearly, you will probably lose this game. Like, you start closer to zero, and uh, in this case, I have chosen bad numbers for you. You know, this is less than fifty percent that you actually move up at every roll, and so you can tweak this these numbers, right? This e and this this uh, p. And if you fix uh, 20 uh, sided dice, then it would be just 20 options for this this probability. But that's basically the setup, right? And the question is, for every uh, configuration of this, you know, generalization of this sort of game, um, what is the probability ending up L in L or ending up in W? And this is the absorbing states, and we're computing this sort of probability to land in whichever absorbing state. Um, Okay, and um, we're going to look at a, a small uh, Python simulation, and I've, I've written down all the simulations and the analytical solution using these numbers. And um, I'm going to just explain this, and I'm also going to explain in an you know, analytical way what the, what the solution is, or how do you, how do you get to the solution. Um, but the example that we are going to look in the code is actually um, a little bit more like intricate than this line. Um, what we are actually going to look at is this this Markov chain. It's it's smaller in the sense that it has only seven states, right? Losing state, winning state. I call this F for failing state. I'm, I'm not very creative there, but I just wanted to add more absorbing states than just these extremes. You can also compute uh, consider this a failing state, and in this case, I, I characterize this as a sort of weighted graph. So there's a graph with seven uh, vertices and uh, it has um, seven edges as well, and 
um, here are the relative probabilities that if you're here on, a, for example, if you're here in uh, in the state, um, uh, take me a second, okay. Uh, if you're here in a state, um, then the, I mean, if I divide by the sum of these numbers, I get a, a probability if you want, you know, it, 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 going from A to B uh, is here characterized by a chance of two over five. And uh, going from A to D is also the chance is two or five. And going from A to the absorbing state is just one fifth. So um, any um, any sort of uh, weighted graph with positive numbers don't have to be uh, natural numbers. Any positive numbers. If I uh, con uh, uh, understand this as, as sort of outgoing relative probabilities, then I can divide it by the sum and I get the probability. So for example, if I'm here in D, then um there is a four in oppa there's a four in seven chance or um rather uh, uh four seventh chance that uh we go to a and there's a three seven chance that we go to c right um sadly um uh, you cannot really read this there <laughs> because, uh, 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 let me okay i cannot grab my um, so here there's this, this just, if you're wondering what is behind me, there's just this explanation. So given a weighted graph, we can make this sort of probability uh, assignment to each transition out of a vertex and, you know, and, and you see that uh, in, in, in principle there, there is, it's possible that you get like uh, walks like this, right? You start here at D and then with a three over seven chance you land here and then with one over three chance you land here and with a uh, three over nine chance, so one, one third chance you go there and you could go in a circle and then you could go back. It could happen that for a long time you actually walk around this, this graph and then maybe you end up in, a, in an absorbing state. And it's, it's sort of interesting, uh, this sort of scenario, scenarios is interesting in that, that it's a finite situation but it still has a shadow of infinity in it because it, it, you have to consider that there are possibly arbitrary long, I mean fixed, but arbitrary long uh, paths there, right? And in principle also an infinite path, you know? <laughs> and with, with vanishing uh, um, likelihood, and you have to consider those if you want to comp compute the real numbers that describe the eventual uh, probabilities. Like real numbers or, or not real numbers or rational numbers, what whatnot, depending on what probabilities you assign here. Um, and so this is our setup. This is what we're going to explain. And um, I will start first with the analytical part. Um, I, my, you know, as opposed to a lot of other videos, I'm, I'm not going to, to deep into any axiomatics in particular because I, I, you know, I, I keep it finite. But um, assuming some basic ideas of probability theory, like, you know, um, how uh, different, uh, like, that you have to multiply um, to um, get the probability of, of uh, chained events and so, on, and so on and so forth. So basic things you will certainly know. Um, I can motivate the proof um, with the small gaps, right? It's not fully formal like my sort of um, more artistic uh, previous uh, proofs in the videos I did before that. But um, um, I think you will, you will buy it. Um, so as opposed to some other videos that I usually do, it is actually the case that this sort of topic is, um, there's a lot of other YouTube videos actually on this topic. Like usually if I choose to talk about the topic, then it's because I'm interested in it and um, I look at in, into it myself and I, or I have something interesting to say, it's a little bit different. Uh, I am really a fan of Markov chains. Um, and absorbing at Markov chains and these finite situations is very neat and nice and there's some linear algebra that you can do and, and some analysis if, if you want. Um, but in this case, it's actually the case that there is a lot of videos that probably have the same title as, uh, uh, than what I do here. So, I mean, if you like my content, maybe you'll find my videos more nicer to watch and, and you know, it has Python and it has a certain uh, angle to mathematics uh, that I'm sure, you know, this sort of, I don't know, engineering 101 videos might not have, um, I assume there's a lot of uh, 
there's a lot of sort of um, applied maths for other subjects that it presented. So I'm not sure if I bring anything new to the table here, but um, nonetheless, um, yeah, I guess I, I have some a little bit of a logical and uh, physical angle to things. So that, why not? Um, also, you know, here you see I have not done a video since oops um, since five months. Uh, but if you scroll down pretty much to the bottom here. Um, uh, um, let me see uh, here. Um, I did a video on Petri nets where I actually also ran uh, randomly sampled um, paths through the Petri, the Petri net. And in this sense, this is actually very close. Um, to, and I also did it in Python there. So if you take a Petri net, you know, which got where, if you remember, the um, are um, uh, the pathways through a network, a finite network in this case, are sampled, uh, are uh, like governed by this, these gates. And, and there, in the Python code, I also randomly sampled um, the activations of the gates. And in that sense, it does the same thing that we do here, right? With a certain probability, essentially, you run through the system and there's no memory um, apart from the state at which you're in. So it's it's sort of Markov chain. I'm just want to pointing at that. This video is actually super popular. Um, 5k views like <laughs> relatively speaking for my channel so maybe um over the long run people will also click at this mark of chain video um it's it's sort of related and have a similar approach and i get very nice comments there there's people reading the the code and and, and working through it and there's some guy um actually i'm and i'm trying to fix a bug there and he actually exp uh, found it in the in the github and so this, that was very nice that was a very fulfilling video as a content creator in a way so but that just as, a, as an aside um there is one uh and there's there's wikipedia pages and markov chains um as always i point out some other resources we are going to do exactly this. We're going to um, do this uh, decomposition and we're going to compute what's called here fundamental matrix. I'm not a fan of this name because there, uh, I know I'm at least two or three other <laughs> concepts that are called fundamental matrix, but okay. We're going to have motivate and, and compute this sort of series and implement it in Python. And then there's a lot of stuff that you can, you know, you can click and pause and, and, and read this. There's a lot of things that you can compute in a sort of very cheap way. Uh, which is maybe surprising. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to do this this thing here. Uh, you don't have to read it now or think about it too much, but um, we are. I'm going to explain this. And then there's also a, there's a, an example which is sort of. Um, it's a little bit more smaller than what we do here. Uh, we have this is basically for four state system, um, and they can consider fair coins, but you know that's, that's not fun. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, what we do here is not too different than, than these sort of finite examples. Okay, um, so um, just as um, to the to the initial situation with the game, you know, I will just tell you what the analytical solution there is. Um, from here on, we are, we will just work in a gen generic scenario. We, we will describe the probabilities in the in the general finite Markov chain in this graph um, with a matrix, and we are not really going to pass down from the matrix to anything else apart from the code. Mm -hmm. um, however, I will like the the, the game situation right there. The, the chain the 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 graph is just this line, and it's a sort of special situation. And in the example that I described. I even said that the rule for moving up and down is given by one uh, like probability, like one die ratio. And in this case, it would not even depend on where you are, the probability, however many coins you are, you, are, you have, the probability of losing your next uh, roll is the same. Um, this is a sort of particularly simple. And there, if you use the general formulas that we will see in this video and plug them in, then you can compute um, the probability for each state in terms of the length of this graph and in terms of the probabilities there. And it turns out that the um, given that you're in the state S out of uh, E, so start and end, sort of start is where you start. It doesn't have to be, it will not be zero, but it will be somewhere in the middle. In the picture before, um, it was four and the end was 11. And the W is... 
um, the amount of uh, die faces that are winning. So in this case, I think it was it was uh, nine. Um, these twenty, uh, you know, whatever the integers are, you can plug them in, and then it turns out the chance of winning the whole game, given the starting position S, is given by this number, this is some integer, over this number, right? And um, to get there, you, um, you um, have to solve this sort of analytically. And the, the spoiler sort of is that this comes out as a geometric, from a geometric series for for this value uh, P, which is this ratio. In this case, if you use a die, it's some rational number. And then that's, that's how it works out. Um, I can make a video if people are interested in, in like going really and into the, the in the nitty gritty of just computing this and maybe some generalizations. But in the rest of this video, we are just going to discuss it for general ma matrix and give an example in Python for this more complicated seven vertex graph. Um, okay. Um, so with that, I mean, I, I, I want to spoiler you uh, one bit, so we are we are going to discuss this sort of Python code in the end. This is this is just the text that you have just seen. Um, here is the Python code. There are some general libraries, like library functions, some general math function, and then an encoding of a graph. Um, you know, you don't have to press pause. So we'll get to that. Um, but what I do here is here's a matrix which encodes all these. Here is all these numbers that you saw before in this this graph picture, right? So we had this picture with um, there's seven vertices and for every vertices you have um, a few, oops, you have a few uh, numbers. Like for these you have each uh, three outgoing and here you have three outgoing, here three outgoing, two outgoing. And here I didn't draw them, but in these absorbing states you can also encode them as having one um, like loop attached here that always says yeah with 100 percent chance like with uh, one um you always stay there and with zero you go back then that also captures the idea of an absorbing state right once you get once you're there you just stay there for whatever happens um and this information is encoded here right so the, the first row a is all the probabilities of um the weights of going out so for example um going from a to a is zero but going a to eight has a weight of two, and so two, uh, like two fifths if you normalize everything. And this is exactly what we have here, right? And so there is this thing called uh, the stochastic mat matrix, which is this weight matrix uh, where you normalize all the rows by the sum of all the values. Right? You can fancyly speaking, I, I, call, I think I call this L1 norm, but uh, I mean, this is just the sum of the, the values. And so given any matrix with positive entries, you can normalize the, uh, the rows and then you get this, uh, the stochastic matrix. It's just a matrix with positive entries where all rows um, sum to, to one. And this, this is the object with which we are going to work with. And as you see on the Wikipedia page here, um, you know, they have this here. Um, from this, you can compute things like variances and, and expected values once you have the theory of probability, which is pretty neat because these formulas are also super simple. Like it's just some aspects of this matrix. Um, maybe uh, here you have an infinite sum if you want, but apart from that, uh, like with the geometric series, as you see here, you it's just some few simple matrix operations. And if the matrix is smaller, as in this case, you can basically get the whole information. You get numbers which were, it would be impossible for a human, you know, I mean, they say von Neumann maybe did this kind of things in his head, but in principle, given the, the Markov chain graph, no human can like take a look at that in, in a second, say, oh, the probabilities are such and such. But then it turns out you can, in like 20 lines of Python, get all these numbers out, which is pretty neat. Okay, um, so, um, yeah, okay, so given an n times n uh, matrix W, this is why I just showed you this matrix which we are going to use. This is this weight matrix. In our case, for example, uh, n is 7. With positive entries, we can just get this matrix PW or P, or I call it uh, PC, whatever. We are just going to deal with one object which is called P. This is this big matrix, the capital P. And 
there is some absorbing states and some uh, transient state, right? An absorbing state is the one where once you're in it, there's zero probability that you get out of it, right? In this game case, we said, you know, once you lose the game, and you lost the game, the game is over, you will stay with zero coins forever. Um, and all states that are not uh, absorbing, whether win-lose or however you want to interpret it, um, are transient states. And the canonical form, like once you have these probabilities in, in a matrix like that, what you do is, um, you for computation's sake, you move all absorbing state to the end, right? So it, you can take the matrix and um, you make this step that you order the rows um, and columns. And what you do is, I have already this here in a canonical form, you move all the, the absorbing states to the end. So necessarily the last rows will all look like this, right? I mean, up to normalization. You have uh, an identity matrix here because the probability of the state F, for example, to go to the state of F is one forever and to any other state it's, it's uh, zero, right? So you have an identity matrix here, you have a zero matrix here, and then you have a general matrix um, above this, or the upper part, and this block you know, this, um, this four times three matrix describes the probabilities of, for example, going from B to F, right? This, this is the weight associated with that or the probability once you uh, normalize. And, or here, the chance of, you know, going from B to uh, W, like winning from B is zero. And you can take a look again at things. So if you are in, uh, in B, then you cannot go in one sta uh, step to, to the winning state. So the probability is zeros, and this is what is encoded here, right? And so this is called uh, R matrix, just by convention. This sequence of QR is like happens often in in, in these notations for these matrices. This uh, is the matrix uh, Q. It's not it's not something like a um, square rotation matrix, which it sometimes is when you talk about QR decomposition. But this is just the names Q and R. And so this is the nomenclature that we're going to use here, right? To discuss the analytical part. So this, I write this down, this matrix like so. And then is here the theorem. And we are going to prove or at least motivate it strongly um, that th this is the case. So the components of this matrix, right? You take this Q matrix, um, you, um, the Q matrix, if you remember, is all the, the transient matrices, uh, transitions. So this is actually a square matrix. There's an associated identity matrix of the same uh, dimension. One minus Q, if you invert that, and uh, you can also uh, see this as this infinite sum in, in terms of ge geometric series, right? If you do the geometric series, um, some, some finite M, then this inverse matrix already pops up. And then if you go with n to an infinity and the, you have some nice metric properties of these matrices, um, which in this case are always fulfilled because the, the numbers in there are, uh, you know, some probabilities, they're small numbers. So these matrices happen to have nice convergence criteria, criteria and nice, you know, eigenvalues smaller than, small equal to one and so on. So you can compute this as an infinite series. You can refute this or you, you just invert it uh, algebraically and you multiply it by R, then this describes the chance that the components of this describe the chance of different states eventually ending up in these various absorbing states. Okay, this is sort of the theorem of the video. And we are going to uh, also validate this uh, in Python. So I have two uh, proofs or I call the motivations here. Again, I have no probability theory and no like uh, really m good means of talking about this the probability of this infinite path and so on and so forth. But uh, like, um, we don't have to be like you know, this formal all the time. This is sort of the, you, can, you will still buy it here, even if this is a, a little bit channel which goes in this direction. I have not written down all the <laughs> inference rules that I'm using here. Um, so, um, I mean, you can read this and you convince it of you yourself. Um, I don't want to make this video too long. We are already half an hour. But uh, the, the idea is this, um, for the sake of this video, we call the, we call, um, 
Ah, how do I motivate this best? Yeah, okay. Let's let's just let's just do it like I've written down here. So um, we uh, can for all uh, states um, assign the probability of something happening. In this case, the absorption or in in this and that state by um, by a, a vector, right? If you have a vector of uh, uh, probability entries, then um, this can be interpreted as uh, probability assigned to every uh, state of something happening. And in this case, I'm interested in, let's say the probability of winning, right? For, like in our, our game. And um, by uh, probability theory arguments in how um, probability, uh, of, the, in, of different events chained together, um, we uh, see that the um, th this probability of um, the what is my symbols here the cave uh, state right if I enumerate all the states in this case for example um, seven for the for the graph situation or um, eleven for the, the picture here that I drew. Okay, but here, for example, these are just the 11 states, but let's stick with the seven states and because there we have the seven times seven matrix. Um, if a generic state is k, is k and um, pi k denotes the probability of ending up in a certain state m, um, let's say the winning state here, right? So for example, if I'm interested in the second state b ending up in this um, winning state this is the seventh state uh, W. Um, then I understand this is the component. I encode this as the component of these vectors, and it, it has this sort of um, relation. And again, this comes out of probability theory, but I can motivate it as such. So the probability, like for consistency reasons, the the probability of um, uh, being in B and eventually ending up in W right is the same as the probability of going from b to c and eventually ending up in w plus the probability of uh, going from uh, b to a and ev eventually ending up there and also the probabilities to go there but uh, the, there's no chance to end up in w but so we get uh, like this system like this consistency uh, system where we say the probability of going from B to eventually, uh, you know, after what, whatever my path in the future starting at B is, going to W, um, that uh, by the laws of probability should be the same as from here doing one step there and eventually ending up there, or doing one step there and eventually ending up there, right? You can see how that, that plays out, right? And so since um, the um this, this propagation rules of events that i spoke about um is by um multiplying the, pro the probabilities and since the this pi exactly um captures the probability of eventually going to w in this case uh we have this sort of formula right the probability of going from k to eventually to to a, an absorbing state in this case w is uh, as this consistency relation with all the other states that it can transition to, okay? And this equation, which I just, you know, motivated in words, that's why I say, you know, I skipped the probability theory, um, is this um, eigenvalue one uh, eigenvector uh, equation, okay? And now uh, that we have a nice uh, P matrix with some entries and uh, absorbing states, and um, it's actually simple to compute that, right? So again, P has this form, right? So if we split also the vector in these two parts, you know, the, the, uh, these are not the indices, but this is just the transient vector. This is in this case, like four states that are transient and three states that are absorbing. If I split this up conceptually in, in part with three and four, uh, then um, because there's a identity matrix there and there's a zero matrix there, the real equation here really reduces to this equation. And, you know, this is, I can bring over the T and that's how the one minus pops up and then I bring the matrix, I invert it and I get there. And 
I know already the the absorbing part of the probability of ending up there, right? If it's um, if I'm concerned with the probability of going to W, then if I'm already in W, I'm 100%, it's like a one, and otherwise it's a zero. And so I know this small vector already, and I can compute with just algebraically basically this 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 um, this matrix, this um, four by three matrix, and thus this matrix, this uh, and and the initial condition if you want like this um, this trivial condition, gives me uh, a, a means of computing the this probability here, right? This is fairly neat, and this is um, how you get there. Um, the same thing is also like stated with our proof here. So what they have here is um, the same setup. They call this matrix, this inverted matrix N, the fundamental matrix. And then they say, uh, the probability of being absorbed in an absorbing state J when starting from a transient state I is the I IJ entry of this matrix here, right? And you can also, um, this is um, computationally more complicated, but you can also like just take the powers, the power of the in initial matrix, and you also get information um, what happens in the future there. Okay, um, so here's another motivation of the same thing, which goes over this sort of um, uh, geometric series part. So as I'm motivated, um, this is the the, the 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 rule of how you m multiply probabilities, right? You can press pause and, and read this these four lines here. Pretty basic stuff. The point is that what pops out here is this multiplication and addition. Um, and so um, this this means that if you take uh, the, the P matrix, which gives the one step probability for, for everything and, and multiply it with itself, it turns out that um, the entries of this potentiated matrix are against uh, in, uh, interpretable in in terms of these probabilities here right so if I give you an example here so um, the probability of going from a to C in uh, exactly two steps it's easier easy to compute right it's the probability of uh, of going from here to here and from here to here plus the probability of going from here to here and from here to here, right? So the probability in this in this graph um, in particular, in this small thing, of ending up uh, f from here to here in exactly two steps is there's exactly two ways in which that could happen. The probability is the sum of those things. And the probability of going in the next step here and in, in, the, in the step afterwards here is the multiplication of these probabilities. And this is exactly then this formula. And if you have more states and, and more ways, right? Uh, if I talk about four, like again, let's go back. Uh, the probability of going from here to here in four steps, but there's then um, maybe more uh, more ways in this can happen, right? You can one, two, three, four, and then it would be there in four steps, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So there's then, if I didn't count wrongly, uh, there should be four ways of going there, so it will be um, product of some again of this sort, and these probabilities exactly then turn out to match exactly the cave power nicely, incidentally, um, if you will, um, of these matrices. And the same thing goes for uh, like sub sub matrices, basically. Like if you consider the probabilities of uh, paths which are just within the transient ones, you know, not being absorbed, then you also have to take the potencies and and then this is the, maybe the more hand wavy, wavy part, but if you want to have the probability of eventually going from one state to a, an absorbing state, and it's the probability of going any sort of path among the transient state and then hopping into that um, abs um, absorbing state from somewhere. And so this is this uh, sum over the, the powers, it, um, in this case finite, but then I, I, you know, I can take the S to infinity, is this describes the probability of arbitrary length paths among the transient states. And the, once you have that, you multiply by the, by the chance of the last step hopping into the absorbing state. 
and then you get this. And so that's that gives sort of another exp more an explanation, right? That gives actually an interpretation of what this matrix matrix actually represents. Um, okay, and so this is what's, what's the motivation. In this last part, I will just step you um, through the code. So what we have here, again, I, I took the same numbers uh, as here. They all represent probabilities. So again, the probability of going from B to Z equals four over nine, right? And so on. The outgoing probabilities um, by normalization are all in sum one, corresponding to the fact that the, the sum over the rows are one. And um, I have uh, coded this up. I, what I do in the in the code is, on the one hand, I do the analytic um, thing where I use the inverse matrix. Yeah, I use the NumPy packet and say inverse. Since this is just um, four by four for the transient part, um, we could also uh, use completely um, the algebraic form, right? We, we could, uh, if I if I had would have bothered, we can use the, the uh, you know, adjunct matrices and, and have at the exact numbers. And I could you give you the rational numbers and see what the probabilities are. But in this case, I just use numpy dot inverse, multiply it by this R matrix, and I get the analytical solution. And what I also do in this video, as you will see in a second, is I um, I code up the simulation of doing actually a random motion through the, the work. And I do this uh, 10,000 times and collect um, how often the A ends up in B and so on, or rather A ups in, in W, A, ups, A ends up in, in F and so on, and then C ends up there and there and there, and I get all these numbers, and then I compare them against each other. And this is what happens here. Let me just clear this again. So if I run this script, then it does this 10,000 uh, simulations, and then it pops up for all transient starting points, what's the probability of ending up here. This is, um, the analytical solution is one solution, right? I fixed it in the start, there's a, there's a, a result. And in the walks, I go this 10,000, um, this ways for every uh, combination. And I just see how much percent of these walks ended up there. And here, I, the diff is the comparison against the analytical solution. And it turns out with 10,000, um, I get very good results. So for example, if I, I could go down to 100, right now I do for every uh, possible start and end point just 100. And the, uh, let me clear this, the analytical solution stays the same because it does not have this is, uh, you know, number of simulations, but the simulation is less accurate. And here you see I'm already like a little bit worse um, because you know the number just accidentally randomly turns out a little bit worse, but uh, this is just nice to see how with the system where nobody except for Neumann maybe <laughs> could uh, get, see these numbers, but that should co come out. Um, but you see that the theory and the simulation matches nicely. It's also a reason why I like this sort of uh, Markov chain situation because you get something r really uh, applicable, like this is just everywhere and the, the, the inside nobody like could see with their, their eye, but you can compute um, with a sort of finite math setup once you have motivated the probability theory. Okay, so the final part of the video is just going through the code. Um, I will uh, not do all the painful things. Like for example, I, I, here's a bunch of functions that I used. Um, some predicates, you know, is a positive uh, vector. All elements are not negative and positive matrix is non-zero. Uh, the uh, normalization, which is really just a sum. Um, in this case, I add an absolute value, but should not be necessary if I don't plug in any negative numbers. Uh, and then a normalization, where you give it a row and it gives you out the normalized row, meaning it will the end result will sum to z to one. Um, some probability uh, code does is also just uh, assertion predicate. Um, here is the NumPy use. I say, given a Q matrix, give me the fundamental matrix. Um, what I do is I define a, a identity matrix of the same size as Q. I subtract Q from the identity matrix and then I do NumPy invert it's the linear algebra package and this gives me the inverse matrix. So this is called N in the uh, Wikipedia article. 
Uh, here is a generic uh, sort of uh, functional programming sort of way of more or less. <laughs> it, it literally says state, so maybe it's not a good example of functional programming. But I keep the, the functional arguments at list functions insofar. It's a pretty generic. So this is a, a walk where you um, give it some transition function, which, you know, it takes a state and it pops out a state. Um, the probability stuff will be part of this. Uh, an exit condition um, for... Oh, this is the, this is actually the whole walk, right? This is a uh, transition function from one state to the next. Um, legal transitions. The exit condition once you have determined this is uh, that you ended the walk. In this case, it will be the um, the uh, jumps um, to the absorbing states. And here is a starting state, and you see, you know, we started the starting states, and then you um, until you actually hit the exit condition. Uh, you just go another step, and this is this nice function here. And then uh, I have this weighted vertex transition, right? I encode all the states as the indices of their enumeration. So in this case, um, for example, 0 to 6 will represent the states, or, you know, or 1 to 7, these numbers. And um, I need a function where... Um, given uh, an, a row of the stochastic matrix, um, if I, for example, say, okay, I wanted the, the nth row and I want to transition from, from the vertex n to another legal vertex, then give me another random vertex which is sampled according to the probabilities encoded in the row, right? Okay, does that make sense? Like this is just implementing the, the one step thing. So, uh, there is certainly, oh, I'm running out of battery. There are certainly um, Python functions that do exactly that. Um, but uh, when I did this, I didn't want to even look it up. I want to give it basic. What I do here is I random, I sample a random number between zero and one. This is just random that random is nice. And then you convince yourself this is an algorithm that does then exactly what I said, right? You give it a row of probabilities. Um, and according to the probabilities, you get another index uh, out of it, which according, like with uh, chance given by exactly the row. So if you have a, uh, a row with entries one third, one third, zero, one third, then um, you would pass it to this uh, function. It will never give you the third element because there, there was a zero and with equal chance, you get one of the other indices, okay. Um, and then there's my, uh, the, the whole graph. So we pass uh, this weight matrix, or we, rather we pass the, uh, we pass the weight matrix, we, we save the probability, the stochastic um, matrix, the probabilities. We um, define uh, how many states are transient. Um, by convention, the first, you know, num states are transient states and the rest are absorbing states, right? We putting put the thing in canonical form. And then we have these predicates that say, is this a predi uh, transient state? Meaning, is this one of the first few states or not? Um, then it's an absorbing state. Mm. Uh, given the formula with the uh, fundamental matrix, we saw that the N matrix this is the n matrix and the b matrix in wikipedia notation is this multiplication of this n matrix times the r and i don't in this function don't just return the b but i um also compute the other probabilities that are not really of, of use there this is just basically zero matrix and the things that were already there right it, there's a hundred percent chance of uh, going from w to w and so on and so forth and so i just return this, this sort of matrix the really interesting part is just the b part here and finally, um, this is this, the whole simulation. So I plugged things together. The transition function is this weighted function, right? You're given an index and you get uh, another, uh, you, you give it an index, it gets the row and you get another index based on the probabilities there. The exit condition is being in uh, an absorbing state. Then the game is over for this walk. And here's a matrix which counts who ends up where and then we just loop 
and as long um, as the thing is uh, transient, um, sorry, we simulate the thing for the transient states and do so many simulations, we go on the uh, walk uh, as long as it goes on, as long as the exit condition is not met. In this case, uh, the, the likelihood of being absorbed is so high that I actually can do um, just a for, uh, while loop and um, eventually things happen to terminate, right? Uh, like, you know, in principle, this could be not be a terminating function, but it just happens to be the case that I just have to wait a few seconds and it actually terminates. And then I get the result, destination index, and I... I save it into this count matrix. And this is uh, pretty much it. So the function that, that is called by main, this function here. Um, sorry, I cannot scroll down more. Um, this function here, this is called by main. Uh, is this function, what, what it does is it takes my graph with my configuration given here. Right? This code works for anything. I will post it also on GitHub as always, or on GIST. Um, I compute the uh, analytical solution. Um, I compute the simulations. These are two different things. And then I just have here a nice plotting function, which gives you all. Okay. Um, I rushed a little bit through the Python code, but I think it was good enough. You can take a look at it on uh, GIST. And I hope you understand now uh, absorption probabilities in finite Markov chains. Um, here, um, you know, you have seen all the matrices. The n matrix was one minus q to the minus one. And just by looking at this, um, you can uh, you see other things that you can co uh, compute. And if you're interested, I might ma make another video about this. I might also make a video on the, the, the actual analytic solution in terms of all the variables for the, the coin game. Um, I happen to have here uh, like a stack of books there and the one um, that uh, concerns probability theory is this here, Understanding Markov Chains. I think I shielded it already three years ago. So this is uh, one I really like. Um, discusses also expected waiting times and these kind of things. Okay. Um, with that said, adios. Love you guys. Oh. Uh...